At Oseco, our customer safety is our number one concern. So today I want to talk about some of the guidelines that are out there on the three typical applications for rupture discs. First, we're going to talk about primary relief. So when a rupture disc is used in primary relief applications, that rupture disc is considered the main or sole source of pressure relief for that pressure vessel or system. Whenever you have a rupture disc specified for primary relief, the most important thing to remember is that the rupture disc's burst pressure and temperature should not exceed the maximum allowable working pressure of that vessel or system. The second type of scenario that I want to talk about today is when a rupture disc is used as a secondary device. So in this case, you'll have a primary relief device, which may be a rupture disc, pressure relief valve, or pressure safety valve. The secondary device is meant to be a backup to the primary device. Whenever you're using a rupture disc as a secondary relief device, it's important that the rupture disc set pressure shall not exceed 105% of the maximum allowable working pressure. The third type of scenario that I want to talk about is the use of a rupture disc in series with a pressure relief valve. In that case, ASME has some very specific guidelines. For one thing, the rupture disc has to be a non-fragmenting design. You don't want a rupture disc that has the capability of fragmenting to actually damage or prevent your, your relief valve from reseeding after it's been activated. Additionally, the rupture disc's holder has to have a tap or some sort of means of monitoring the pressure in the space between the rupture disc and the pressure relief valve. So the reason that we'd monitor pressure in the space between the disc and the relief valve is because a rupture disc is a differential pressure device. If the relief valve is there, it can actually capture any pressure that bleeds through damage to the disc, and it can be added to the positive pressure on that disc in order to reach the burst pressure that's marked on the rupture disc's tag. So, for example, a rupture disc with a set pressure of 100 psi could fatigue and develop a pinhole or crack that could allow 90 psi of pressure to build up between the rupture disc and the relief valve. In that scenario, your vessel's pressure would actually have to reach 190 psi of pressure before the disc is activated. So it's important that we monitor pressure in that space. There are three main ways in which the pressure in that space is monitored. The most common way you'll see used is the use of a pressure gauge. And this is typically used in conjunction with a telltale device. This consists of a nipple T and an excess flow valve that's there to bleed off any pressure that builds up. You also may find the use of a pressure transducer to monitor pressure in the space. In this case, it's usually run to a control panel or a control room where that pressure is monitored. The most common way we see uh, pressure monitored now on new applications is often with the use of a pressure switch. We recommend that if you're using a pressure switch to monitor pressure in that space, that you ensure that your pressure switch's set pressure is the minimum increasing set pressure available for that particular device. Well, one reason would be because a relief valve in normal operation and use without any isolation can allow a certain amount of fugitive emissions. This can be process chemicals that escape from the vessel, travel through the relief valve, and into any downstream piping. If that process fluid is dangerous or caustic or corrosive, you don't want that to be exposed to any equipment or personnel outside of that system. You can use a rupture disc that seals with a metal-to-metal non-mechanical seal and ensures that no process fluid leaks through the pressure relief valve. Additionally, for process chemicals that can be damaging to certain types of metallurgies, you'll see a rupture disc used to isolate that relief valve as well. This prevents any damage that can occur over time to that relief valve and extends overhaul periods for that valve. If you'd like to hear more about how rupture discs can be used within your plant or system, please reach out. We'd be happy to speak with you.